So, welcome back everyone. It's been a couple of weeks, like I said it would. And even though I haven't made any videos, it's been kind of hectic around here. Both with the house and everything surrounding that, but also at work. It's been complete chaos for the last couple of weeks. But I finally had some me time out in the garage, so I figured I'd put together a short video. So first off, let me just repeat what I said in the latest video. The series where I built my Queen Bee Pro CNC have gotten a lot more attention than I ever thought it would, and this is truly amazing, so thank you everyone out there. But this also have raised a lot of questions from you guys. Both in the comments, I've gotten emails, I even had a phone call with a guy. You know who you are. Uh, so I figured I'd make a kind of a prologue or addendum to the Queen Bee Pro series and just do a Q&A. Uh, so I have a short list with the most common questions here on my phone and I'll just work them off from top to the bottom and we'll see how it goes. So, question number one. Did you clean the bearing blocks before installing them on the rails? And yes I did. Uh, the bearing blocks were packed full with the same kind of rust inhibitor or rust protection grease that the uh, that the linear rails were and also some contaminants that I don't think was grease but maybe like metal shavings or just some crap. So I cleaned off the bearing blocks just as thoroughly as I did the rails and then I uh, re-greased them with uh, I think I used lithium grease I'll have to check if it was but yeah I think it was lithium grease. So second question what controller do you run? Well as I think I mentioned in the latest video and maybe one or two more before that I'm running a system called ESTL controller and also the attached CAM package for that controller. And this is actually a free software developed by a guy in Germany called Christian. I'll have a link to his site down below if you want to check it out. And honestly, this program is well worth checking out. There is both a freeware version and a paid version. And you get basically everything you need in a simple intuitive controller. And you also get a CAM package that supports both 2D and 3D milling operations. And as a breakout board or control board, I'm using an Arduino Nano and I'm communicating to it over USB. Which isn't the best thing when it comes to like uh, noise and interruptions. But so far I haven't had any problems. The key is to route your cables inside the cabinet properly so you don't have any interference. Ground all your external machine components and use high quality shielded USB cables. So, third question. Are you Norwegian or Swedish? Yes, yeah, Svensk, kind of short. Fourth question. What size electrical cabinet do I recommend? Uh, and like I said the guy that asked this, it's kind of hard to give an exact size because I have no idea how big machine you're building or how much stuff you're planning to put inside it. But I can say err on the side of caution. Bigger is always better in this case. So if you're choosing between two sizes of electrical cabinet and you think you could fit everything in the smaller, get the bigger anyway. Because this will improve everything. You will both have better air circulation for cooling. You will have a lot easier time laying out all the cables and installing all the components. And you will have space to grow over time. So if you want to add components, let's say a, a fourth axis or something, you will have space to add all the necessary control components inside the cabinet. So definitely get bigger if you can. And I'm not really sure, but I think this next question, the fifth question, came from the same guy that asked about the electrical cabinet. So, fifth question. Uh, would you recommend an EMI filter? And this came after a discussion about using a VFD, because like I've said previously, I am planning to put a, a water-cooled spindle on this with the variable frequency drive controlling it. And I might even have gotten some components for that build, so... Yeah, maybe not too far in the future, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, he asked if I would recommend an EMI filter for the frequency drive to prevent any electrical noise interfering with the, the limit switches and everything. And like I told him, that really depends. Because most high quality VFDs today actually have built in EMI filters. And now I'm talking like your Siemens, your ABB, I'm talking your Alan Bradley VFDs. So high quality VFDs generally have an EMI filter that will prevent too much noise coming out on the incoming lines and disturbing well basically all your electrical appliances connected to the lines. Now if you are getting a cheap Chinese VFD they probably won't have an EMI filter included. Uh, you can still get away with not using an EMI filter if you follow the rules I've laid out for you often on in this series concerning electrical uh, noise or interference. So use shielded cables where you can, ground your machine, make sure your signal wires and power wires uh, 
aren't routed next to each other for any long distances. Make sure you separate them as much as possible or make sure that they cross each other at a right angle. Uh, and all of this serves to prevent electrical noise. So, but like the only way to know for sure is for you to follow these rules when you build your electrical system and then try it out and see what happens. And also a good way to prevent electrical interference on your specifically limit switches I know people have a problem with is to actually use a 24 volt system for all your external connections. So instead of using 5 volt like I'm doing here on my limit switches, use 24 volt on your system if you can. Because basically the lower voltage you're using in your system the easier it is to actually get interference. Because you need a lot less current induced by the, by the power lines to drive the voltage and actually trigger the circuit. So if you can, use a 12 or 24 volt system and follow everything else said about grounding and everything. Uh, so question number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Could you add a real electrical diagram? And yes, of course I can. There'll be a link down in the description where you can download it and check it out for yourself. Uh, this diagram isn't fully complete, I should say. I have changed one or two small things, but it's like 99% accurate and describing what I have here. Uh, that being said, it only describes the power system. So we're talking the 220 volt system on the incoming line, not all the uh, not all the uh, control and signal cables. And this guy asked about this to know how I hooked up my emergency stop and the uh, the main power breaker. So question number seven: Is there a CNC kit out there that comes with ball screws? And like I mentioned, I am planning to upgrade this with ball screws, and I think I'll have to use 12 millimeter ball screws for the axis, but that's a future project. Now I did do about five minutes worth of research into this, and the only hobby level CNC, or I should say hobby level CNC I can find that comes with ball screws as standard, is uh, the Raw Avantic from Raw CNC here in Sweden. Now you should be aware that I say hobby level in big quotation marks because this CNC is actually around 6,000 US dollars. So uh, I, would, I would probably term it more like a prosumer level CNC. Uh, they used to have a smaller CNC as well, quite similar to the, uh, the Queen Bee Pro CNC here. That was called the Raw 1.5 because it was 1.5 by 1.5 meters. And that was actually really popular here in Sweden but unfortunately they're not selling that anymore. But if any of you out there know of any other hobby level CNC kit that uses ball screws as standard, please leave it down in the comments. So, next question. I think this is question uh, 8, maybe? Uh, how high is the friction on the linear bearings? Now, this came from a guy that was actually building a CNC with the same type of linear bearings as I'm using here, but not the Queen B, I think, anyway. And what he noticed was that it was kind of a lot of drag on the on the bearing block on the linear rail itself. And like I told him, there should be quite a bit of friction here. Or really, it's not precisely friction, it's actually pre-tensioning. So to get these bearing blocks to perform as accurate as possible, they are pre-tensioned and there are actually different grades of pre-tension depending on the use of them. Now these are probably either second assortment high win or really good knockoffs. So these numbers might not be exactly what I'm having here, but I have left a document down below describing the different classes of pre-tensioning on the high wind linear bearings down below. So, question number 9. Now we're almost at the finish line here. Why did you use an Arduino versus an off-the-shelf controller? Now, this has three main reasons. And first of all, I do quite a bit of hobby electronics involving Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and also like discrete components and circuit boards and everything. Uh, I've shown you some of that here on the channel and there might be some more in the future depending on if you want to see it or not. You can uh, answer that question down in the comments as well, by the way. So I am really familiar with the hardware. That's the first reason. Now, the second reason is that since I do all of this as a hobby as well, I had all the components I needed already on hand. I didn't need to buy anything. So instead of having to buy something and wait for the shipping, I have to just grab it from my parts bin. That's the second reason. And the third reason is that it's a really cheap solution. Getting a dedicated controller, like an, an eating CNC board or a Mesa card or something, that would run me back probably around 200 US dollars. And that's quite a lot compared to the Arduino Nano I'm running right now that would cost you about five bucks shipped. And since I already had it on hand, there really was never any question to use anything else for now for this first iteration of the machine. Now I am planning an upgrade, 
probably to Linux CNC and using a Mesa card in the future, uh, but that's a, that's a future subject. So now we're at the final question, question number 10. And I'm sorry to say, this is only relevant for Swedish viewers. Uh, just yesterday I got a question asking me how high import taxes I paid on this machine. Uh, and that's why it's only relevant for Swedish viewers. So the breakdown is as follows. When I bought everything from Bulkman 3D, I bought the Queen Bee Pro mechanical kit, I bought the cable chains and I bought the router attachment. And for that I paid 9871 Swedish krona. That's around 950 US. And for that I paid 1315 Swedish krona in import duties. And that is both customs fee and also import taxes. Now that's quite a bit lower than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be around 3000 Swedish or 2800, somewhere around there. But I'm not complaining. So there you have it, those are the, uh, well, the nine most commonly asked questions and also an extra on the end there for the Swedish viewers. Now going forward here, I'm hoping it won't be quite as long until the next video comes out. Now it probably won't be a video a week, but I'm gonna try to step up my pace a bit compared to this one. Now I have quite a lot of projects planned using the CNC, so if you're into that, please stick around. And as always guys, if you like what you're seeing, please let me know, send me an email, leave a comment, you can find my Instagram down below. And till next time.